today. It is uh, 5 15 on September 17th. I will call the meeting to order. Ashley, we do roll call, please. Lindbergh? Here. Nippert? Here. Shaven? Here. Kroger? Here. Kelly? Here. Thank you. We did receive the agenda. I think there's only one change we're going to make is the uh, for the board, board appointment for Jenny Barnett. It will expire on November 20th of 2025 instead of the 30th. It's the only change I would have for that. And with that change, I would ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. motion. Second. Motion by Lindbergh, second by Kroger. Roll call Lindbergh. Aye. Nipper. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. Any conflicts, state those now or forget along the way. Something comes up. Gene, do I vote on the board of trustees or do I abstain? Um, probably cleanest if you just abstain. Okay. Okay. I'm sure I actually got that noted. Under the uh, consent agenda, these are all under one motion, one roll call vote. We have the minutes of the uh, September 3rd, 2024 meeting. Claims list 1322 in the amount of $92,572.99. We had a list of any of the larger amounts. Anybody have any questions, notes, anything about those? Seeing none. We have the expenditure and revenue reports for the month of August of 2024. Share statistical report for August of 2024 and the renewal application for Good Growing Enterprises, LLC, doing business as milk and honey for a Class C retail alcohol license. Our motion for the consent agenda. Motion. Second. Motion by Nippert, second by Shaben. Roll call Lindbergh. Aye. Nippert. Aye. Shaben. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. And item number three is time and place regarding the uh, proposal to vacate and sell parcel 833-102-004001, plotted North Street and Plum Street, block four, lot six, seven, and platted alley all west of 7th in the city of Harlan, Iowa, to uh, Deborah Dinison Moore. Kind of see the information. Gene, do you have any more to add to that? I know Deborah is on the line. I will uh, just highlight once again for those that may be seeing it or hearing it for the first time. Uh, this has been uh, recommended from the Planning and Zoning Commission as a required process. It has to go through a public hearing with the council before disposing of any public property. Uh, this again is the project area. It's north of the new bridge uh, on uh, north of Dye Street and the specific areas once again, which we showed last meeting. These were undeveloped areas from an original 1850s plat and the areas in red are the current public property and the areas outlined in yellow are current parcels owned by Deborah Dinesen Moore. We have had no public comment, written or oral. We had a, two people stop in City Hall today, yet they thought it was uh, for another area of town or across the street, so uh, they were not concerned at all with but, uh, but uh, and I guess you can see if anyone else is here, but I know Deborah Moore is on the line as well. The, um, well, I can speak to that when you get to the resolution, assuming we have a positive response here. So that's all the comments I have, Mayor. Okay. Anyone else have any questions, concerns, input? No motion to close the hearing. Okay. You may want to see if Deborah's got any comments. Oh. If, uh, sorry. Deborah, do you have anything you want to add to this? Well, maybe just a little bit. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much for letting me zoom in, too. Um, I can, I can really only say the same things that I said at the meeting of the, the Planning and, and Zoning Commission. That um, I just want to 
put a modular hole on that parcel and in order to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll have to dig a septic on it. I can't hook up the sewer. So I will need pretty much the whole length of that parcel in order to make her have room for the laterals. And it's, it's my desire to just live there in peace and just, uh, and just be a part of the Harlan community. And that's really about all of that. That, um, that parcel has been in my family for probably a hundred years. I think Tony Dinison probably had it. And then my dad had it and now I have it. And uh, I would just like to live on the land that I was raised on. And as Deborah told that is my, That's my only aim. Thank you so much. And Deborah uh, has worked with um, environmental health, uh, and has been with the county assessor, uh, talked with HMU as well. So there is, uh, a, a, we have water uh, and electric that services that area, and uh, there's no sewer on that side of the creek, so sanitary or a septic would be um, allowable based upon our ordinance, and she's coordinated that with environmental health. So a lot of due diligence prior to getting to this stuff. All right, thank you. Um, so we have a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Kroger, second by Nippert. Roll we'll call Lindbergh. Aye. Nippert. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. Next to then we have Ms. Kroger. Kroger. Aye. Thanks. I just skip over. I skipped over. Yeah. <laughs> You make the motion okay. because you made your presence yeah. known. <laughs> Next, we would have a motion to consider vacating and selling parcel 833-102-004-001 platted North Street, Plum Street, Block 4, Lot 67, Platted Alley, all west of 7th Street to the city, in the city of Harlan to Deborah Dennison Moore for the amount determined in this public hearing. Did we determine that yet as far as and finalize? Passing the resolution once it's platted and surveyed and obtained. Do we have to wait on all that then to determine Yeah. So the uh, as commented on last time and also uh, shared with you and is the purchase price was recommended at fifteen hundred dollars, and uh, all of this will be formalized coming back to you with the resolution. Uh, what's on determined at this point is if it needs a survey or not. It may not need a survey in, based upon talking with. Um, the county assessor and uh, the attorney. So uh, but once all that's formalized, it'll all be put into the uh, purchase agreement, which will be uh, solidified with the resolution. But that purchase price, as we previously stated, is $1,500. Um, and again, that was based upon previous vacations of other easement areas, also using what we were uh, selling the GH Christensen lots at, that full infrastructure um, was arrived at that price. And any survey costs and your legal uh, recording fees would be uh, at the cost of the uh, of the buyer, which Deborah is aware of that. So. Okay. So is there a motion <coughs> to vacate and sell the parcel? Motion. Second. Motion by Kroger, second by Shaven. Roll call Limburg. Aye. Nipper. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Kroger? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Great. Right. Okay. Um, I think this next one is the same thing. Re consider recommendation from planning and zoning to rezone the aforementioned property from the public hearing from A1 to R2. Briefly highlighted this at the last meeting as well. This is the same project area. And just for clarity and cleaning up, uh, the red circle is green, which represents it's currently zoned A1. Uh, to clean up the map and zoning map, you just make it more consistent to turn that to blue, which is R2, and allows this type of primitive structure. And A1 still allows this type of primitive structure. We just believe it would be a cleaner map so that uh, it, it follows that. That was a recommendation of planning and zoning. Assuming that the previous hearing went well to vacate, um, we recommend this as well. 
Is there a motion? Motion, Mayor. Second. Motion by Lindbergh, second by Nipper. Roll call Lindbergh. Aye. Nipper. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. Okay. B is uh, receive and file the Harlem Fire Department minutes from August 19th of 2024. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Shaven, second by Kroger. Roll call, Lemberg. Aye. Nipper. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. And out of that comes the approval of changing the minimum age for membership from 19 years of age to 18 years of age. Any other discussion about that? Just a minute. Go ahead, go ahead, G. Oh, please go ahead, Kyle. I guess my question was going to be, I'm assuming you probably have something to do with retention as far as reaching out to newer recruits of that, of that age bracket, I'm assuming? Yes, uh, I know one of the items that the chief shared is that looking at this for two reasons, um, it's become more of a national standard. Uh, and that age of 19, I don't think it had been changed for decades since some of the original formation of the fire department constitution. And then secondly, in uh, looking to um, more, more collaboration or possibly a junior firefighter type program with the schools. And okay. then upon graduation, for those who do stay in the area, a more seamless transition if they want to become full-time with the department at age 18. So, I guess we got another fire department officer here that, I don't know. Not an officer anymore, but yeah. Okay. It, it gets a younger generation in and gets the high school age so that they could go into full membership because you can't be um, firefighter one certified until you're 18, but like your junior program, you could go through the, the training. You could go through the firefighter one and then when you turn 18, you test out, you could be certified, nationally certified at that age. So get a little bit of the younger crowd in there. So, and people transitioning maybe um, home yet for the summer and then off to college, if they come back, they're still on the roster and can still be a part of it. it would help with that. And anytime there's a fire department constitution change or amendment, it does need to be for, you know, formally blessed as a final step with council. So that's why it's before you. And it, again, had been uh, reviewed and approved by the fire department. Okay. Does that help? Oh, make it, well, yes, thank you. I was just curious on that. <laughs> no, make that motion. Second. second. Motion by Lindbergh, second by Shaben. Roll call Lindbergh. Aye. Nipper. Aye. Shaben. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. Item C is resolution 2578, approving the Iowa Department of Transportation 2024 Street Finance Report and authorizing the city clerk to sign the same. Big deal. Yep. You to sign one of these things, don't you? <laughs> Any discussion about that, Jeannie, or anything else we need to? Anything you want to highlight, Ashley? That, uh... Nope, it's just a review of last year. And again, I would just say a great, great job and first, one of the first state reports, I guess, with Ashley. And I know she's gone through training on this and even got some refresh here in the past <clears throat> 30, 45 days. And for everyone else, it's, this is a look back from what is a required state filing, but it's a look back at what actually was expended from July 1 of 23 to June 30 of 24 of between uh, any of our street expenses and road use tax. So it's in this prescribed required state format and uh, buckets. <coughs> so I'd say nice job, Ashley. Good job. Okay, is there a motion for resolution 2578? Motion. Second. Motion by Nippert, second by Lindbergh. I heard a whisper on this <laughs> thing. I didn't hear it finished. That's all right. <laughs> Roll call Lindbergh. Aye. Nippert. Aye. Shaved. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. Even from afar, Lindbergh, he, he lets you know he's around. So. <laughs> 
That's a good thing, Kyle. All right. <coughs> Review the noise variance permit for Shelby County Speedway, Tiny Lund Night at the Speedway, starting on September 20th, 2024, and ending September 22nd, 2024. This is an annual request with the final race of the season. Uh, really haven't dealt with complaints in the past. I know we've had law enforcement on site if there's any issues down there. Friday night they do have a DJ after the cars are done. And then uh, Saturday night, uh, simply based upon the car entries. Last year they had a whole, they had a lot of cars last year. Um, they're not expecting as many this year. We talked to Doug uh, Bates or Bots the other day and probably, you know, certainly expects over 100, but doesn't expect the 200 of last year. So, um, they generally try to be done much earlier, but this could, could, could go up until 2 a.m. So. Wow. And they were, they were racing both nights last weekend as well. Yeah. We find a, a lot going on down there. Yeah. So, this is an annual request. Um, Okay, is there a motion for the variance permit? Motion. Second. Motion by Kroger, second by Shaben. We'll call Lemberg. Aye. Nippert. Aye. Shaben. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. And then review the 2024 homecoming parade permit for Friday, September 27th at 2 p.m. Uh, student council got that filed yesterday. Uh, reason for the amended agenda: standard uh, parade route, um, starting over by Turk, going over to Six, up around the square, and then ending on the south side. Uh, it's uh, homecoming time already, in Harlan community. So no, no changes there, and have not had issues. And I expect law enforcement will try to lead the parade as they traditionally have. And, time do you say that was? Two. Two. Sound like you're volunteering right here. <laughs> no, just writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure somebody volunteers. All right. You make the motion? Sure, I'll make a motion for you. Second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll you give the uh, motion to uh, Shaven and Second to uh, Kroger. Sorry, Mr. Lindbergh. No, it's okay. Your, your 10 second delay didn't get you in in time. So. 5G. <laughs> Roll call, Lindbergh. Aye. <laughs> Nipper. Aye. Shaven. Aye. Kroger. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. City Administrator Report. Well, this is quite a jovial group tonight. I'll see if I can uh, and maintain it, that. Way. Keep it as light as uh, this group sometimes seems to be. I do have a number of updates, so bear with me. Just uh, keeping you and the public updated on some of the goings on, as well as uh, items that are moving along. I continue to work with uh, HMU on securing an agreement for IT support and services. Uh, we met with uh, just you know ensuring one a, a solid agreement that. Uh, help stand the test of time um, as best we can. We met with uh, insurance yesterday. And the fact we're under the same umbrella, it creates some nuances. Umbrella in terms of, you know, HMU has a separate board, yet it's under the part of the city. So an employee, how is that looked at from, a, from an insurance standpoint? Be sure we've got the I's dotted and T's crossed in that regard, but that's moving along. Um, we did receive clearance from the DNR on uh, NEPA or environmental protection clearance for the river access project. So that will be at the uh, February DOT letting. Uh, nice to have all those boxes checked. We just got notice of that last week. Uh, next week we have some of our city staff, myself included, that we do annual pipeline, uh, gas pipeline awareness training with HMU, uh, with Colburn and, and Eric do a nice job of that. So. I'm always a refresher and creating awareness around um, the sight sounds and dangers and awareness regarding the gas, gas supply and the pipelines in town. We uh, secured and got notice that uh, we're also on that same date, the 24th next week, 
We'll be doing our pre-kickoff meeting with our sewer lighting project. And I say pre-kickoff is because we're, uh, there's a lot of required language with the uh, federal requirements and this one with uh, BABA, which is Build America, Buy America, that has to be in not only our main contractor with uh, municipal pipe, but also every subcontractor agreement. So this pre-kickoff is ensuring all that language is done properly with IEDA. They'll be with us as well. Uh, so this isn't a pre-kickoff with construction, it's a pre-kickoff to uh, getting us to the kickoff. <laughs> so that is moving along. The wind hail claim we had back in June, uh, continue working with, we've gotten everything from uh, our carrier, the EMC, and working uh, by department and by area of what improvements we're looking to do. So for example, um, anything under our blanket policy, which is the 5,000 deductible, which was a lot of our park structures, our pool, some of our smaller buildings, um, where we had uh, asphalt shingles in maybe three or four of our uh, park shelters. We've transitioned a lot of those to metal. We've got coverage. We're gonna look to transition a lot of those to metal with our insurance claim. Um, we've got a lot of coverage down at JJ with some of the hail damage on those roofs, but on dugouts, we're looking to keep those as an asphalt shingle roof versus having softballs and baseballs hit the metal roofs all the time. Uh, we had some uncovered areas at Turkelson and Vets because that fell under the wind hail deductibles 1%. Thus those deductibles went to those deductible amounts for thirty and forty thousand dollars type respectively yet based upon some of our claim money where we're not repairing things we're going to uh, use some of those funds to re repair for example the new blue awnings at the entrance of Vets which were just done a year ago and they're quite visible. You can see those are, have hail damage. It's not structurally anything wrong, but cosmetically, we're going to leverage some of those dollars. I'll share that uh, summary with you once we have it finalized. We've been working through that by department, by building, and uh, getting closer. Just met with Tim Miller today. We're actually gonna go out and get bids for, uh, but we're not taking any action at this point. There's just a lot of, as you might imagine, behind the scenes. I know Joe's doing some of that with HMO as well. So. I'll let you know that that continues. Uh, met with uh, some with, uh, last week at uh, the community college and actually with, with the school, Todd was there as well. Um, this is uh, associated with STEM, but it's uh, the current year version of STEM. And there is Partner Palooza, and I shared with you over the weekend a PDF that Todd and I and the group had. And it's, this really goes to any, any business, uh, if you want a hard copy, that's what was in the PDF to you, that uh, any po uh, possible projects where there could be collaboration with the students for a student project, that a business is facing a challenge or needs a creative, innovative look to things. It could be with uh, social media. Um, could be things like this, you know, the, our crosswalk art wasn't a project palooza type of but it's things that, like that might fit the bill. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Their deadline's November 4th, and any questions, uh, please direct those to uh, Sarah Fink and Kylie Cum um, uh, with the project part, or Plusa projects. We have an airport meeting tomorrow, and uh, as I shared with you, at the last meeting, the FAA came out with an announcement that for the next two years, uh, the, the standard 90%, 10%, the FAA and feds are upping, update, uh, upping the ante there to 95%, 5%. And since we continue to have, because of our uh, capital project supports at the airport and the other uh, departments, we continue to have local match available. We can do twice the work with a local match now because we now have 5% more from the feds, which is why we're, we'll be discussing tomorrow the apron expansion project and try to get phase one of that started next year. So stay tuned on that, uh, but that will be a robust uh, meeting with our partners and engineers tomorrow at the airport. 
and before I have some show and tell, uh, last week we also had the SWIP co-annual meeting, so I'm not stealing hopefully too much of Todd's thunder here. You have to know the mayor was there, uh, a couple council members. The uh, mayor did a great job with uh, welcomed our community and did a great job with uh, lightening it up with the alphabet soup, as I'll, I'll, I'll term it, with you know, every industry, every uh, group has what I call acronyms and alphabet soup. So uh, the mayor made light of you know CBG, CDBG and ABC and SWIPCO and SWIDA and a few others. And a few others, but it was great to host it in Harlan. Uh, Todd's <coughs> the chair of that board and very involved. And SWIPCO and SWIDA do just tremendous between planning, you know, our, our sewer lining project. Again, uh, SWIDA is doing our administrative process for all of that because um, they have the expertise in that. And SWIDA providing over half a million rides and uh, throughout Southwest Iowa during the last year. Just things that we once again take for granted that that agency does a, a wonderful job with. And with that, some show and tell. I always call it show and tell because it's a little more lighthearted. And Kyle, I did mention to you, I'd try to share the screen here. I didn't want to leave Kyle out of the show and tell, and I see Deborah's still on, so I'll see if I can share my screen. That's not a live view of Kyle right there. <laughs> it's 5G is a little slow. He's under 10,000. I approve. <laughs> He's under 10,000 feet, it's fine. Hey, there it goes, City of Harlan. You see that? Uh, so, uh, uh, make no mistake, this, uh, yes, this is a hot air balloon. And uh, this was Sunday morning down by the airport. And this was just south of the Corley Road. And uh, it was another type of aeronautical device. This one just didn't have two wings. And uh, I know uh, Scott Pigsley was around the area, uh, was aware of it. And uh, there's been a balloon or two out there before, yet uh, this certainly captured the sky about 8 o'clock Sunday morning. So those in there may have seen that. Uh, it did use our airport grounds as it, uh, I believe, took off and landed in the area. So you can see Corley Road there just in the, the background there. So well, It certainly was a beautiful day for it. It was definitely a beautiful day for it. And uh, everything was safe and went well, as I understand. So Good deal. Uh, Kyle, can you see this next? I can see that lovely okay. welcome to Harlan sign. Just being sure that the uh, share screen was still working. Uh, and we're, we're inching towards the finish line with the welcome sign entr entrance welcome signs. This is the south sign and all landscaping is complete there. Uh, looks very nice. Um, and the, nice. Uh, the close up, there's the red wigalias as they're called on the ends and then there's uh, the uh, day lilies that are on the front and back side. And the north one is on the landscaping about a third to a half complete. Um, it should have that finished up this week. Well, nice to see the progress for that project. And uh, thought I'd start with the ugly, the not so pretty view on uh, this project. This is uh, one of the dumpsters on the pool painting and rehab, if you're wondering what all this stuff is. And that's a collection of paint and power wash paint. And then you see a lot of uh, long tubular stuff, and that's the caulking that wasn't holding up. So. Please report that the pool painting project is done. Uh, this gives uh, a quick view of there were the three crews. Um, you know, the day I stopped down there, a fine mist and a fine cloud of, uh, but they, this, come to find out this group out of Illinois is doing a 10, or, 10 or 12 other pool projects this fall, all in Iowa. How long does that um, last, their work there, when they're done? Eight to 10 years. Wow. Um, so just a couple couple of photos here. So this is the deep end. Um, this was the shallow end. Um, a little closer up of you know they get power washed down to a lot of a lot of concrete and then uh, little very little paint left. I think I've got a close up here. Yeah, here's a close close up of one of the cracks where where that caulking was coming out of, and it just you know after eight ten years and. So the decision was made to go ahead and get all that caulking out and get a fresh set of caulking in there. So that's what that looked like. Here's a clean view of uh, the repaint job on the shallow end. And this was a tip, an idea that the painters brought to 
uh, uh, Tim, and they reviewed this, uh, actually shared it with the park board last week too, and they thought this was a great safety enhancement. And you might wonder, well, this is quite a, look at the green line, that isn't the most straight line. There's a reason for that. Uh, and before there wasn't a line there, but that is a, indicates when it's transitioning from one foot to two foot. Mm -hmm. So you can tell your infant or toddler that, oh, stay behind the green line. There wasn't a green line before it. And then the yellow line, I think, is the two foot to three foot. Don't, have, don't quote me exactly on those footage depths, but so a nice enhancement there. And then the, the umbrella feature, that was uh, changed back to the original yellow. Uh, that was power washing taken back. Uh, nice clean look to that as well. And I think this is, finishes up with a uh, one additional feature enhancement was you see the red lines. Uh, that is, uh, was recommended by them. So the first red line, that is the um, uh, slide area. So that's the slide catch area, as, you're, as I'll call it. And then the other red line further on this photo is that is the transition into the uh, trough and the deep end. So some features or safety features that didn't exist before, but just with some simple paint, uh, enhance those areas. As well as you can see in this one, you know, some of the painting and stenciling, all that got done as well. So this project was complete Tuesday, I believe, of last week. So a nice job, Tim, Tim, Tim and Tony, and uh, they reviewed this with the Park Commission last week as well. Please speak up if you have any questions. Just trying to point out some highlights here. Uh, this is obviously a picture of the front of City Hall. It doesn't uh, quite do it justice, but you can see some pallets of uh, brick there. And these pallets came from down behind the street garage. And that turned into a, a project. Um, you can't, in this picture, if I zoomed in real close, you could uh, see that there's not any type of uh, landscape in the front of City Hall. And uh, with this, you can. You can see now that uh, there's actually a landscape bed um, outlined with some of that brick. Um, you can now see that the, the uh, plants are there with also the mulch. And then there's a, uh, a view of the finished product and another view of the finished product with a nice little flag out there. Uh, one of the City Hall staff, Jen Malone, I think was the main catalyst to this. Um, just continued, I guess, fall projects and it's great to see, um, you know, staff driven ideas and beautification. And uh, some of this was donated to plants for splitting hostas at homes and um, you know, of course, the street department and some of the others just pitched in on a week ago Wednesday, and but, uh, Jen and Ashley was out there, so everyone pitched in to help out. So additional beautification of City Hall, and it's great, great yeah, to see nice those job. things. That's nice. So looks good. Want to nice share that, work. Share that with the public as well. That would uh, a nice, appealing place and a place to call home for all of us. And this isn't as large as I thought, but a. Uh, I know this is on our Facebook page, but uh, some of you may not see that all the time. Uh, the Master Gardeners um, adopted and helped out with two of the um, areas of the parks this year, so two of the uh, flower beds at the parks. This is a before photo. It doesn't look real glamorous and appealing here, yet uh, that turned into this. <laughs> so they adopted and uh, wow. put all that in and maintained that through the summer. Uh, this is on the south shelter at Pioneer Park along Pine Street. And then this is the one along, this is the bed, the weedy bed beforehand at the North Park. And then this is what uh, they did and uh, enhanced it with for the summer months down at North Park. And then th this mulch down here, you might think uh, that actually transitions into the uh, North Park sign. It's not, uh, um, that is kept within another area there. So, but appreciate the. Master Gardeners of Shelby County and adopting those for our parks and another collaborative effort. And the end of my show and tell, appreciate you bearing with me, but this is always fun to share these things, is uh, we'll call it a collaborative project um, times 10. And I'll just walk you through the project. Um, this took place a week ago because you all, uh, this governing body allowed for the street closure and allowing of the painting of the crosswalks. And our street department uh, setting up, uh, you can see here on the left part of this picture where the white background or the uh, painting area was outlined. You can see the cones are being set up. 
Um, this is the south cone area and safety, and we did have the uh, barricades and uh, road closed ahead done by that time as well. And then, of course, you had to get students down here, so I was actually in the area, so I was able to get, get a, a picture of the actual transit van that, uh, you know, took this number, you know, they came down in the, some of the school, school vehicles. And I just had a few shots here. Uh, there's a multitude of shots out there on social media, and I just got <coughs> a few. This was the bubble crosswalk from Leah Marie to Bowers as they got some of the initial painting done. And then this was the finished product of that bubble area. This is the graphic area between head, uh, Milk and Honey towards Saw Construction and those uh, students working on that one. Uh, this was some of the initial stencing and layout of the uh, fruit, fruit crosswalk with the uh, apples and plums and cherries and watermelon and, and that's from Secret Shannerty over to... Milk and Honey. Gosh, I want to keep saying uh, Milk and Honey. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> And then uh, some additional uh, paint, not complete yet, on the uh, fruit crosswalk. This was the finished product of the uh, daffodils, really pops there from uh, Bowers over to Perception or Jerry's building. Hats off to one of the two main crew leaders, and hats off, but he's got a hat on. That's Scott Buchanan. Scott's been very involved with the Wellness Alliance and with the Feel Better group, and uh, he was one of the two main uh, Troop leaders for the day. You can see more finish here on the on the fruit crosswalk, and then this is uh, this is the backside, unfortunately. But with the hat on here, that's Brian Burns. Brian was one of the other crew leaders, been very involved with the project, and Brian actually made his building available, which is Brick Wall Gallery along Sixth Street. That was kind of home base for everyone that day, and uh, hats off to or hats on to both Brian and Scott for. Uh, their leadership uh, and all, all the hours they put in that day to make this project a reality. Uh, at least this is the paper from the paper, so Renee, appreciate the coverage with the newspaper. And uh, hats off to these students and kudos that they, they truly made it happen. And a wonderful collaborative uh, uh, project and event. And then one of the last features in installations that each of the crosswalks has a design more or less uh, kudos to who designed that crosswalk. And then, then in each of the crosswalk areas, it has the emblem that's stenciled in for Community Canvas. Um, well thought out, a lot of pieces to it, um, to a completed project. You may have seen, if you read the article in the paper, and the uh, perspectives and quotes from a number of the students. And the, the impact, I think, was much further. I mean, we know it was going to be an impact just because of the collaborative approach, yet hearing firsthand from the, some of those students' comments, um, I think really puts the icing on the cake. It's the impact of these types of projects. They may seem small, yet they're really large. And what one piece that you as a governing body also, you may think, oh, we did a street closing permit, we blessed. It was really impactful to, um, to this community when things like that happen. And impactful to students that say that, you know, it's a, a, from a migrant family that says she participated in installation and said, I now feel part of this community because, and, and one of the others was that, oh, this was my crosswalk, I designed it, and when I come back, or not only when I visit, but when maybe I do come back, I made this happen. So, really transcends a lot of, a lot of things here, so. That's enough for the show and tell tonight. Um, any comments or questions from others? Again, I appreciate you uh, allowing me to talk through that, but any comments, questions? Anyone else like to share on the show and tell? Small accumulative projects, right? Yes, inching forward. There's a lot of them, it's nice. And currently just a lot of those are around beautification or visible, impactful, that it all come to fruition about the same time. And wonderful to celebrate those and share those when they happen for us. Uh, tomorrow, a few of us, uh, Jenny, myself, and Ashley, head up to our annual league conference in Sioux City. The uh, mayor's coming up on Thursday. So a few, few of us will be out the next few days. A great opportunity to uh, focus for this conference again is done annually, and it's really targeted at elected officials. 
uh, many other city staff will be there as well. Six to seven other elected officials across the state that um, there's a whole host of seminars, topics, all the way from parks to TIF to nuisance abatement to um, civility to <laughs> there's top uh, there's one hour sessions on just about any topic you can think of. And lastly, this is the second meeting of the month, so I always like to celebrate um, six-month anniversaries for two individuals. We have a six-month anniversary for Susan Brahman, and she's with the City Hall team, and six-month anniversary for Chloe Cron, and she's on the library team. They'll celebrate those six-month anniversaries this, uh, this month. And then uh, also celebrate uh, achievement of a certification that was uh, Josh Hack in the wastewater department that uh, he soon after hire uh, got his CDL. I think I shared that before, but I want to share that again for his certification. And with that, that's all the updates and show and tell I have for this evening. If you have any questions or comments? Thanks, Jean. Thanks, Jean. Thank you. A lot of good things going on around here. So. On my report, I've got a couple things uh, on my list. The first one is uh, I would appoint a motion to appoint Jenny Barnett to fulfill the remaining term of Doug Hammer on the HMU Board of Trustees expiring November 20th of 2025. Uh, motion. Second. Motion by Kroger, second by Shaben. Roll call Lindberg. Aye. Nipper? Aye. Shaven? Aye. Kroger? Aye. Kelly? Abstain. Thank you. Abstain. <coughs> Secondly, I would ask to, uh, for a recommendation, a motion to appoint Rick Shaven to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term of four years, expiring July 1st of 2028. A motion, uh, Second. A motion by Nippert, second by Lindbergh. Roll call, Lindbergh. Aye. Nipper? Aye. Shaven? Aye. Kroger? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Um, and then there's not, this not on my list, but I would just like to mention that a week from today um, at the high school, the Supreme Court of Iowa is going to be in town. Um, they call it Court on the Road, and they will have an actual case that uh, they will hear. And it'll be lawyers, they'll be wearing their robes. I know someone who's kind of quasi in charge of that group that uh, they're all going to be here that day, uh, that, that evening and afterwards, and they will be around to talk about who they are, what they do, and they are real people. You know, I'm married to one of them, and she's about as real as they get. So uh, there's six other ones that I've gotten to know over the last few years, and um, I mean, it's not like Perry Mason on TV. They're real people, and it's a real case, and so it does involve real people, but um, it's just a good way to kind of see what they do. They were in, they call it session last week. They heard four or five cases on uh, last uh, Wednesday, and same thing, oral arguments, and this is an oral argument. Um, so they will, each side gets a time to talk about what their case is, and, uh, and then they take some time, and they will answer questions from the crowd, uh, whoever's there, you know, they open it up to the, to the public, and then they'll leave, and they'll, adjourn and they'll go out in the cafeteria and for refreshments and stick around and talk to everybody face to face too. So um, good people. They're from all over the state of Iowa. Um, just lucky enough that one of them's right here in Harlan, my wife. Yeah. And uh, she would welcome anybody. It says open to the public. You don't have to be involved in law to come. I'm not going to say it's going to be the most exciting case you're probably going to hear. I didn't know what it is, but uh, it won't be, you know, a lot of gory pictures, all that kind of stuff. It'll just be people talking about the law. But uh, it is kind of neat to see what they do, you know, and, and get to see them up front. And like I say, they meet in Des Moines once a month, but they, um, it's nice they're taking one of their, take, bringing one of their cases to Harlan. So, you know, they've been here before. I will say, hey, I was lucky enough that my father-in-law was on the court for 30 years, and they were here once or twice maybe in those 30 years. Because uh, they haven't been doing court on the road very long. So I think he only had one case maybe he was here. And, it's the first time that they've had one with my wife Susie being on the court, so I would put that out there. It's open to the public, so stop by at 7 o'clock at the auditorium at the high school. Um, what date was that again, Mayor? Week from, two, week from tonight, Tuesday 24th, 24th. 7 o'clock. Perfect. Yep. Mayor? Also yes. Remind people that same evening at 5.30, there's a supper being served at the country club. Okay. And it's open to anyone. But if you want to go, you need to get a hold of Daniel over at Cohorst 
law firm just for a headcount for Okay. Okay. And that's all I have for my chair. So I will open it up for uh, Todd Lean and Shelby County Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Well, good evening. Good evening. Todd. Uh, just a, a few calendar items to make note of. One of them is that uh, Rosen Blonda Farm has opened here for the month of October. Um, this is their second year of being in business. They've added a new thing this year because of all the events they have out there. You can go out to their website and you can just buy a single pass to get you into each event or you can you know, just choose different events. But um, one of the big uh, fun nights that they have is they actually have a frightening cornfield um, haunted corn maze on October 19th. So kind of put that on your calendar and remember that. It's, it's just a blast out there when they, when they do that. Um, also this weekend, a couple of items. Green Ridge uh, show is this Saturday and Sunday. There's a lot of new things out there. And if you're for that one, it's a $5 pass, but you get in for both days for that $5. So if you don't get everything checked out on Saturday, you can go back on Sunday. And then another item on Saturday is out in front of Milk and Honey at noon, we're going to have a ribbon cutting for the new crosswalk paintings. So um, make sure that you come out for that. Other than that, that's, that's all I've got tonight. Thanks, Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Harley Municipal Utilities, Joe Ruschenberg. Hello, everyone. Hello. Joe. Just a few items. Like usual, update on a couple of our projects. We're all water uh, project update. Uh, McCarthy Trenching is the general contractor on that project. And his subs are working on some of the punch list items to try to get that completed. Um, seeing the construction of the access road will be completed probably by the end of next week. Um, of course, then will be added onto that to the deep well number 35. Uh, that was added onto that project. That will start construction. We're still looking by the end of uh, September 1st of October for that project. I think I mentioned before we're hoping to have that well online before the end of the year. Um, and that'll pretty much finish up that project then, with that change. Electric to overhead underground project. Uh, boring subcontractors should be done with their work by the end of the week. And then the general contractor burns electric. Uh, will continue to pull wire and set equipment. There again, they're going to probably fall into, you know, uh, spring, summer of next year, 25, 30, before their complete project. There is a later completion date on that, so I mean, they'll likely probably finish before the actual completion date on that project of next year. And then uh, lastly, I was just going to mention HMU has ordered materials. Um, we're looking to extend water to the new Angerland FS facility south of Monogram there. Um, with that project, uh, we're looking at also installing gas main and fire conduit with that water main just to be prepared for future growth, possible growth in that area down there. So, so that'll be happening. Like I said, that construction will happen this fall yet, but we just gotta get the material here and get that kind of set up as far as the contractor at least take the trench for us. Uh, kind of a combination of some of our employees kind of helping with fusing the gas pipe together, getting that ready to go into the trench. So. That's all I have. Any questions or concerns for me? How were you coming along on the lead pipe inspecting? Most of uh, I should have checked on numbers. Like I said, we got to have that submitted by October 16th, which is coming. I know we're still working. You know, every Wednesday we have one employee and then a couple of employees on weekends. Um, I think last, last month we had about five, 600 left. So I don't know what they've got complete. They were. Busy, busy. It's, it, like I said, it's slowing down. They're not quite getting as many done because it's more spread around town oh, trying to get the ones that they couldn't get the first time around. Um, you know, so they're maybe getting 50, 60 per week now. I mean, it's slowed down quite a bit, but you know, it's come along. I, mean, I think we'll end up, if we don't get to every house, we'll submit everything as is, and then there is kind of a grace period where we can go back and then catch up those ones that we didn't actually get into. Are you getting a lot of them where they can 
take the picture and pretty much identify it themselves and so yeah I mean yeah. That's, we, we, we keep saying we you know the our customers can go to our website and get in and be able to do that survey same thing if you got a, if you got a smartphone it'll kind of just walk you through the process and get that submitted there's still some people doing it I mean a few here and there that are completed themselves but otherwise they're calling in and we're setting up appointments to actually go out and try to meet with them too sure it's coming along. I'm glad we started when we did. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and we've even had some people that just bring the picture into the office yeah. on their phone sure. and want us to do the rest for them because yeah. they don't, which they've done, it works. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Joe. Shelby County Sheriff's update. Captain Butler, is that correct, sir? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you got our Muscle memory. numbers. Uh, we had 17 accidents, 28 uh, citations, 72 warnings, 13 arrests, no criminal mischiefs, uh, one theft, 436 uh, contacts, five welfare checks, three business or residential alarms, and then five animal complaints. Um, last week we had two vehicles stolen, both were recovered suspects arrested in one of those um, a big part of that is people sharing their videos with us so um, Patriot's Choice actually allowed us to, to look at their video footage on some of the buildings they have this is the third time that we've actually worked with them and been able to solve crimes based off of that so it's huge if people or businesses have doorbell cameras or any other type of cameras and allow us to uh, view that footage or share that footage with us. It really helps make our job a lot easier. Um, I, we have talked in the future, I know the county's been talks about redesigning some website things, right Kyle? Or we are, at least at the Sheriff's Office, and maybe um, getting a list of people who are able to share their video footage with us, they would they could go onto a link and, and kind of put that, that's down the road. But, Currently, if people uh, hear of something happening in their neighborhood, maybe you didn't see it, but if you go back and see it on your on your cameras at your house, if you call the office and, and share that with us, it's huge. It really helps us solve the crimes a lot faster. Captain Butler, just throw a plug out there with that. Actually, the kickoff call for that's going to be happening next week. So um, we actually they have pretty much the interface built for us. So providing my and Austin's approval. We'll probably be looking on our Facebook page for us for sending out for information for the public to sign up for that. So I would say probably within the next 30 days, start looking for that to where they can sign up and allow us to access um, that information or be willing to share. It's a great tool. It's helped us tremendously. Yeah. Video, I mean, most people or a lot of people have videos now and it, it helps us just a time. We um, do a pretty good job, I think, of getting stuff solved, but it's a lot faster if we have that extra bit of video footage. So, and again, reminder, don't leave keys in your vehicles. Uh, lock your vehicles, lock your houses, lock your sheds, lock your garages, because there are people that uh, want your stuff as much as you do, but if it's not locked up, it's a whole lot easier for them to get. So just a reminder for that. See something, say something. I know, uh, Sometimes we get phone calls into the office that come and, oh, at nine o'clock I saw this and it's now four o'clock in the evening. You know, if you call right away, no matter how minuscule it may seem, just call right away and, and we'll have somebody check it out. But the faster that we can get a response to something, the, the better chances we have of solving it as well. Anything for us? We still full staffed? We are. Awesome. Still currently full staff. Still one in the academy. One in the academy. He's in uh, week four right now. So. And taking my council hat off and putting my sheriff's office hat on real quick, I can happy to say that the Shelby County Jail is fully staffed. We just put three conditional offers out and have three people starting on the 27th of this month. So, yay. <laughs> yes. And we're also actually holding for Ottawa County as well because their jail is currently shut down for HVAC issues, not shut down. They're doing HVAC renovations. So over the period of the next four to six months, we are also hold housing Ottawa County arrests too as well. So the Ottawa Police Department, Ottawa Sheriff's Office are bringing all their detainees to us to process. So we've been busy. 
That's all. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Comments from the council? Your rebuttal, Gene, from anything you forgot? Absolutely not. Good. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Sure.